It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, Chris Gordy here from Locked On SEC, and this episode is brought to you by the all-new 2022 Nissan Frontier. In the all-new Frontier, the adventure begins where the road ends. So get out there and find your Frontier. The all-new Frontier is 310 horsepower, standard for when the trail gets tough. Shop NissanUSA.com today to see more features the Frontier is loaded with, from premium interior and a 9-inch touchscreen and zero-gravity front seats. Find your Frontier today in the all-new 2022 Nissan Frontier. Shop NissanUSA.com. It's the week we've all been waiting for. It's Bedlam week. We've got 10 and 1 Oklahoma State, 10 and 1 Oklahoma, about the Lockhorns and Stillwater, and we've got Locked On Bedlam for you. You are Locked On Pokes, your daily podcast on the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It is Bedlam week. And we have a Locked On Bedlam edition with Linda Godfrey from Locked On Pokes. You can follow her on Twitter at Linda Lyons. I'm sorry, Lindellians. I always say it wrong when I'm when I'm looking at your Twitter handle. It gets me every time. And you can follow me on Twitter at John Nine Williams. Here I am the host of Locked On Sooners. And we are going to get right into it because this is a matchup of epic proportions. Linda, how are you doing, my? I'm doing really well, and also you should know that everybody butchers my Twitter handle. I did not realize that miscommunication until somebody pointed it out way too late in the game for me, so yeah. don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah, I, I'll probably get it wrong a couple more times. It's okay. I'm, I'm glad we normally have Josh from Locked on Big 12 to, to say it or, to, or, ha- or he has you do it because then I won't get it wrong. But, Linda, this is a Oklahoma State team coming into this game that is playing as well as anybody in the country for my money. I mean, their, their, their defense is, has been phenomenal all year long. They're one of the best in the country, easily the best in the Big 12. And let's start from there. You know, this is a team – that has been really, really good at getting to the quarterback all year long. What is it that they're doing uh, defensively with the front seven to get to the quarterback? I think a lot of it just has to do with what Jim Knowles puts out on the field. He disguises packages so well, and he has a lot of veterans on that defense that understand those disguised packages. So they're able to execute them really well. He just, he motivates I I think he's a very good motivational coach. He's not, he doesn't harp on these guys. He expects perfection and they know that he expects that and they execute it to the best of their ability. And he, he just, I think he got them understanding what to do on defense and, and how to play things. And they can, they can do so much out of all the different packages that he puts out. He's just a, a defensive genius and has been, with this group of veterans all season. Yeah, and one of the things that I was kind of getting as I was watching more and more Oklahoma State is they do like to blitz, and they do like to throw a lot of different coverages or a lot of different blitz packages at you. And that's something that Baylor likes to do as well. But when when Caleb Williams and Oklahoma played Baylor, he was more willing to drop a lot of people into coverage, especially in the first half. Is that something you think that they're, they might adjust to in this game where they they might look to just try to rush four? and see if they can beat Caleb Williams or at least confuse him in the secondary? I don't know. Our secondary gets a lot. Like, I don't think they get the credit that they deserve right now because so much of media and and even myself included, I'm talking about the pass rush. I'm talking about the run defense. And the secondary is doing just as fantastic as a job. They're doing their job week in and week out. And I think he trusts... That secondary, it's another group, it's another room full of veterans. And so he knows that he can trust putting them on the field. They've had pass breakups. They're doing their job. Sure, there's been some penalties in particular last week against Jarek Bernard Converse, but those penalties didn't set us back in huge ways. He knew I have to make this stop in order for them not to, you know, take it for a touchdown. And sometimes that you have to take that gamble. Um, I just think they're playing really smart. And because of how smart the secondary is playing, I don't think he'll have to drop extra back. But Jim Knowles is great at watching a couple runs, 
watching a couple of drives and then deciding what he needs to do for his defense. And I think that's probably my favorite thing about him is that he sees how an opposing offense plays adjust to that. And then you really see that shutdown defense. So I expect him to do the same thing against Oklahoma, kind of figure out what their game plan is, uh, make the adjustment adjustment and, and work on shutting it down. And that's going to be quite the chess match between him and Lincoln Riley this week. I mean, Oklahoma State's defense, they're ranking the top 10, both in passing yards allowed and rushing yards allowed. And I think that's that ability to keep teams in balance, I guess. I mean, teams are looking for balance. They want to have balance, but they're not able to gain anything anyway against Oklahoma State. It doesn't matter if they're trying to throw it or if they're trying to run it. Oklahoma State has been really, really good at shutting it down. Now let's flip to the offensive side of the football. Now, We've talked a lot about Spencer Sanders on the Locked On Big 12 uh, roundtable a lot. You know, people know my my feelings on Spencer Sanders, but he's played good football and he's helped them win a lot of games this year. When he's not turning the football over, he plays well. What are you seeing out of him that might allow him to kind of take advantage of an Oklahoma defense that's been up and down, though they're playing pretty well the last couple of weeks? It's really just his decision making, which was always the issue. He has always had a dual threat ceiling where he can tuck it and run if he needs to. And he was a good pocket passer as well. He gets out of trouble if he needs to. He does everything really well, except for when it came to his mind game. And that that was a step that we were asking as fans, is it finally going to happen? And Mike Gundy said all offseason, he's finally taken that step. Oklahoma State's offense has getting it's getting a lot of flack, I think, from a national media standpoint. But the last four weeks, they're averaging 41 points a game, just over 41 points per game. If he's not turning the ball over, he's managing the game so much better than what we were used to seeing. He's making smart decisions about when it's time to bail on a pass play and just getting the yards he can. He's not making bad decisions, worrying about losing yards. He's just playing smart football which was the thing, the step he needed to take. And I think he's done that. This offense, when at full health, has played really well against Texas Tech. They struggled a little bit. Texas Tech was, uh, you know, we were short some of our main guys on our offensive line. We didn't have Brennan Presley. So there were definitely some pieces missing from our offense against them. It was understandable that they didn't get into the end zone every time. It didn't really matter, though, in the long no. run because of that defense. So... They do what they need to do, and they do it efficiently. They have been for the last four weeks. So I'm not worried about the offense. I'm excited about the step that Spencer Sanders seems to have finally made in the mind game part of his of his football game. Well, when you have a defense like Oklahoma State's, it doesn't take much much more than a couple drives at times to to win a game. Like they they're a team that's capable of winning a game with just 20 points scored. And looking at, you know, the outside the skill position players, you know, obviously Jalen Warren's having a great year, but I want to talk about Tay Martin as well. He's the guy that stands out on tape. Now you you've kind of had some some thoughts on him. He's been a, a little bit up and down sometimes struggling with drops, but when I watch him, dude's just making contested catch after contested catch and if there's an area where Oklahoma struggles defensively at times it's in battling for those contested catches what is it that he does so well that allows him to get good position to make those those catches I don't I don't want to compare him wholly to Tylen Wallace because I think they bring a couple different things skill set wise to the table but they both attack at the high point they are both fantastic at getting those 50 50 balls they're less 50-50, more 70-30 when you're throwing to a guy like Tay Martin. And sure, the drops have been an issue twice this year. You hate to see that. But as long as they continue targeting him, I'm not worried about it. If if he makes a drop and then the coaches go, okay, we're going to sit him for a minute, that then that becomes a concern. But drops are part of the game. They're going to happen. They're unfortunate when they do. But again, luckily, it hasn't been a big enough issue to – look towards somebody else and i think right. he's mostly riding that ship like he's he had a couple bad drops but he had a couple fantastic catches as well uh last week so i i think he'll he'll get his targets and and do his do his job against so and who's the guy the that we need to worry about otherwise you know in the passing game other than tay martin well, Brennan Presley, of course, was injured uh, last week. He just did punt return duties. I think just kind of as a rest week for him heading into 
what was going to be the biggest stretch of our season. So hopefully he will be at full capacity next weekend in, in Stillwater. If he's not, I think John Paul Richardson did fantastic in the slot, was a good distraction so that Tay Martin could go seven for 130 yards. He was, he did just enough. I think Brennan Presley is a little bit more well-rounded of a player, but whoever's in that slot, it's going to be either JPR or Brennan Presley if he's at full strength. And they're somebody that you have to keep an eye on. The entire Oklahoma State team, both the run game and the catching game, I think really thrives in like a yards after catch situation. Mm -hmm. They do not go down on first tackle. I think that's something that's really fantastic about the whole crowd. So it's something that you have to keep an eye on because they'll slip a tackle and run it 15 yards before you can blink an eye, which is, which is great, but it's definitely hard to guard when you can't tackle somebody. And that's something that Oklahoma Sooners fans will have to be on the lookout for because Oklahoma struggled with tackling at times this year. They had a great game against Iowa State, only missed six tackles, only the second time all season where they've missed fewer than 10. So that'll be something for us to watch. And we'll come up after Linda talks to us about prize picks and we'll talk about Oklahoma side of things in Bedlam. So if you haven't used prize picks, it's fantastic. It's great for college sports. It has professional sports as well. You got touchdowns, interceptions, field goals, all the props you can think of. And it's super easy to use. Y'all, when I tell you something super easy to use, I mean it. I'm so bad at computers and my cell phone, but this app is super easy to use. Use the award-winning app on both the App Store and Google Play. Entries can be made in less than a minute. It's that easy. Make sure to use promo code Locked On for a 100% match up to $100. Don't hesitate. Check out Prize Picks or go to your App Store and download the app today. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. David Harrison here, the Locked On Washington football team podcast, celebrating with you a 21 grain salute to a less boring sandwich thanks to Dave's killer bread. I don't know about you guys, but when I eat pizza, I eat it for the toppings, not the crust. And when I eat a sandwich, it's for what's inside the bread, not for the bread. But when I throw a sandwich on 21 whole grains and seeds, thin sliced bread from Dave's Killer Bread, it is the epitome of addition by subtraction. That thin sliced bread lets me focus on what's inside the sandwich, but also adds to the sandwich with killer taste, killer texture, killer nutrition, a subtle sweetness, and a seed coated crust. Dave's Killer Bread is America's number one organic bread for a reason it tastes so stinking good dave's killer bread is made with the highest quality organic and non-gmo ingredients and is power packed with whole grains fiber and protein visit daveskillerbread.com to learn more and look for dave's killer bread in the bread aisle of your local grocery store all right we're going to continue talking about bedlam we're just a few days away now as oklahoma travels to stillwater to take on the oklahoma state cowboys looking to get that berth in the big 12 championship it's going to be a fantastic game. And Linda is about to, to drill me with some questions here about the Oklahoma Sooners. Oh, I try not to drill you too hard. So <laughs> Oklahoma State's seen some young quarterbacks this season. They've kind of managed to shut those quarterbacks down. And it's been a case where, like, they come in the game before they have a fantastic game. You're like, this is the answer. And then Oklahoma State's defense has been like, we're just going to take it down a notch. So how do you think Caleb Williams will uh, fare against Oklahoma State's defense as a true freshman quarterback? Yeah, if you would have asked me this question a few weeks ago after he played Texas Tech, I'd have felt pretty good about his chances against Oklahoma State. He just was so dynamic, getting the ball downfield, making quick decisions, you know, and getting rid of the football. The last couple of weeks against Baylor and against Iowa State, he's looked a little more indecisive. He's held on the ball a little bit too long whether it's under pressure or not. I mean, he's just, he's just holding the ball too long. And that's, that's part of the reason I wonder if Jim Knowles will try to attack Caleb Williams with a little bit more coverage because he's struggling right now. He, he play he does a lot better when he's getting man to man coverages versus zone. And that's where Oklahoma's wide receivers have been a little bit better as well, because they are a good group and they're able to win their one-on-one matchups. He's struggling a little bit, trying to throw a little few or a few too many contested balls. I think he's just not really trusting himself right now. So it gives me a little bit of pause heading into this matchup that, you know, that all of a sudden after two weeks of really subpar performances that he's going to find it 
in the passing game. I will say, though, that his running ability is an X factor, and we saw that last week against Iowa State. First play from scrimmage takes it 74 yards to the house, ties the game 7-7. And that's the thing that I think Lincoln Riley and Caleb Williams can lean on in this game. He may not have an efficient passing day. I really actually don't expect it. But if he's able to have a really nice day on the ground running the football, if he's able to churn out, you know, five, six yards of carry, that'll be that that'll be enough. And I feel like that's going to put Oklahoma in position to potentially win this game. You know, the Oklahoma State Cowboys have a good offense, but I don't think it's one of those that can run away from Oklahoma. But unless Oklahoma is able to put some drives together and sustain offense, you know, for seven, eight, 10, 12 plays, then it's going to be a lot it's going to be a lot trickier for Oklahoma's offense to keep up with Oklahoma state. Um, it, it's, I, I think a lot of Sooners nation right now has some concerns about Caleb Williams heading into bedlam. I disagree based on Twitter, but, but I will give you that. So yeah. we talked about uh, kind of putting some pressure on Caleb Williams. Uh, Oklahoma's offensive line, usually a pretty stout offensive line having some issues this year. They've allowed the second most sacks in the big 12. So are you worried about Oklahoma state getting home on Caleb Williams this weekend, considering that they've got the most sacks in college football right now, or do you think the offensive line shows up to uh, do a job? That's also been a big question mark uh, the last couple of weeks. Now there've been times where Caleb Williams has had time to sit back and, and scan the defense and, and make a decision, but then he just holds it too long and, and runs into a sack. But then there have also been times uh, against Baylor in particular in the second half where their their pressure just started getting to to Oklahoma and they were able to break through and get to Caleb Williams and to Spencer Rattler when he stepped into the game for a drive. Um, it, it's definitely a concern. You know, Oklahoma, I feel like they do a, a little bit better job right now. They're doing a better job right now running the football. But even then, it's it's not always consistent either. It's just kind of an inconsistent group. It's not the the group that we've seen – you know, Baker Mayfield or Kyler Murray or Jalen Hurts play with. And I think this is why you want to see Lincoln Riley get Caleb Williams involved on the ground game in the ground game, because it take, it's going to take a little bit more pressure off of the offensive line to sit there and have to pass protect, you know, 30, 40 times against a really good Oklahoma state front. That being said, it's not necessarily going to be easier sledding trying to run the ball against one of the best run defenses in college football. But I feel like they want to try. I want to see them try to simplify things for Caleb Williams a little bit going into this game, so that he's able to make quicker decisions, quicker reads. Because Oklahoma State's going to come after him at times. It may not be every time. It may not be every drop back, but they're going to get after him, and he needs to get rid of the ball because it's going to lead potentially lead to turnovers. I went back and watched the West Virginia game, and Jared Dagey. Some of it was just his indecisiveness, not getting rid of the football. I mean, he he had time, and and there looked. There appear to be open receivers, even on like a bubble screen, like a bubble screen was right there. And he just sat there and looked at the guy and held onto the ball. I'm like, you got to throw the football like, or throw it over his head, not take a seven yard sack. Like you got to do something, just not sit there. And so Caleb Williams has to be better than Jarrett Dagey was on that day, but he's got to get rid of the football. And, and it is a concern. I think Oklahoma's offensive line is needs to have a good week this week to get the offense going. It's not going to be one of those situations where they're going to be able to, you know, pound away with the run game because Oklahoma State's really good. Now, I hope they will. I hope they'll just continue to go at it, even if they're not efficient. But they're going to have to figure out a way to to get some yardage. Um, and some of it's going to have to come through the air because it's going to be very difficult sledding on the ground. Okay, so we're going to switch to Oklahoma State's offense, OU's defense. What do you think the Sooner defense plan of attack will be? Do you think they're going to try to force the game into Spencer Sanders' hands and try to take Jalen Warren kind of out of the equation? Yeah, I think they need to. I think that's the best way forward for Oklahoma. They had a really great game against Brees Hall last week. They held him to 3.8 yards per carry, just 1.56 yards after contact. And that's really the key in the in the run game for the Oklahoma Sooners. If they're able to get tack, get the ball carrier down on first contact, you know, flow to the ball carrier, get multiple guys there, it's going to make things a lot easier for them. Uh, as a defense, you know, they'll, they'll put Spencer Sanders into some third and long situations, which won't be very comfortable situations for him. You know, Brock Purdy had a pretty solid week 
you know, other than some turnovers, you know, Oklahoma forced six fumbles. Uh, they, you know, forced Hunter Deckers and Brock Purdy to throw two interceptions. Brock Purdy had a fumble that re- got returned for a touchdown. You know, Spencer Rant- or Spencer Sanders, rather, he's been you know, a little loose with the football at times in his career. And Oklahoma's had a lot of success against him as well. So I think that gives them a little bit of confidence going into this one that they can say, hey, listen, if we, we, can, we can sell out against the run, we got pretty good corners on the outside. We feel like can match up fairly well with Tay Martin. You, they might hit us for a couple chunk plays at times, but we're going to trust that if we ask Spencer Sanders to beat us, that he's not going to be able to do it every single time. I mean, he's had a good season. He had a good game against Texas Tech, but it was an inefficient game. You know, like his completion percentage still isn't isn't very good. Um, so he can hit you for some big plays, but you, if you ask him to do it 30, 40 times in a game, that's kind of playing right in Oklahoma's hands. And so they've got the pass rush. It's starting to materialize the, the expectations that we had for this front four in the preseason have really come to fruition in the last couple of weeks. Now that people are back healthy and they've got the guys in, in the, in the back end to be able to hold up against, you know, a, a passing game that's solid, but isn't going to be the best passing game that they've seen all year. It's going to be a, it's going to be a good one. I, I, I'm going, I haven't, I don't go to Bedlam because it makes me incredibly anxious, but I think I'll be more mad if I don't go than if I go. So. Yeah. I think for a lot of Oklahoma state fans, this is going to be probably the most anticipated Bedlam game for a while. And potentially you hear the coaches talk, or at least you hear Mike Gundy talk, and it could potentially be the last Bedlam game for the foreseeable future. If, you know, some transitions happen in the next year, but, you know, we'll talk about how we see this game playing out. We'll give our predictions. Sorry, I just dropped my phone on the floor and uh, we'll do that after I talk to you about our friends over at bet online. Bet online is the number one place to bet on all your sports action. This Thanksgiving it's Thanksgiving. And we know what that means. Football and nothing goes better with football than Turkey and betting and bet online has you covered all holiday season, more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Head to the new updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus with promo code locked on. And it's not just football. Bet online has pro and college hoops, NHL, boxing, UFC, and even your favorite Vegas casino games. So don't wait. Take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and the easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. Bet online. We're stuffed with this deal. <laughs> Sorry, we're stuffed with deals this Thanksgiving. That, that line makes me laugh every time. Um, and then I also want to talk to you about Built Bar. Built Bar is the best tasting protein bar ever. It's easy to eat. It's 100% covered in chocolate. Tastes great, and it's great for you. So many great flavors like mint brownie, coconut almond, my personal favorite, the peanut butter brownie. You got salted caramel, double chocolate, and cherry barcia. Make sure you go to builtbar.com. Sorry, built.com now. Use locked15 to get 15% off your next order. It's the low carb, low calorie, low fat, low sugar, and high in protein protein bar that makes you think you're eating a candy bar. So go to built.com, use promo code LOCKED15 and make Built Bar your daily routine. And now we're back with Locked On Bedlam. Hey, thanks for making Locked On Sooners. And if you're an Oklahoma State fan, making Locked On Pokes your first listen every single day. Also check out some of the other great shows we have on the Locked On Podcast Network. I always recommend the Locked On Cowboys guys because I listen to that show every single day. The Locked On Fantasy Football stuff is great as well. So if you're into fantasy sports, make sure you go check those guys out as well. Now, Linda, it's prediction time. Or no, actually, you wanted to you wanted to talk some other things first before we got to that, right? Do we want to predict the, the Baylor game? Do we want to? Well, do we want to? Do we want to touch on Baylor before we touch on our game? Just yeah, just for safety's it. sake. Let's do it. Let's do it. Because they're hurting at quarterback. Baylor is. Yeah. So do we think the defense and Baylor's running backs are good enough to get this win this weekend? Cause I do. Yeah, I think so. I, I don't, I don't have much reason to believe that Baylor's not going to win this football game. They, they played fairly well without Gary Bohannon last week. So I, it, to me, it comes down to Oklahoma. Oklahoma has got to win it. You can't rely on anybody else to win your games for you. So, uh, I mean, that's the fan of me speaking, not that one game has anything to do with the other, but um, my hope is that Baylor wins this one so that Oklahoma goes into Bedlam. Do they play? Do they play at the same time? I haven't looked at the schedule at what time Baylor plays. I have, I just know ours is a night game because yep. it's our third, it's Oklahoma State's third in a row. And I am the most impatient human during 
when we have night games like it, it's like three o'clock and I'm like are we is it time yet because <laughs> I don't know what else to do today well that must be nice to have some night games we've we've been saddled with the 11 a.m slot uh, well when you're really when you have the second best defense in the nation that tends to happen oh my god it's so <laughs> insufferable now um Hold on, I'm trying to find Baylor's schedule so I can see if it's going to even matter what time. Yeah, they, so Baylor plays Texas Tech at 11 a.m. I mean, they'll handle, oh. they should handle business, um, but I would really like to see them go ahead and take care of, of Texas Tech in that early game so that, uh, so we're not sitting there trying to lay back and be like, oh, we've got the Big 12 championship sewn up. I mean, they still have a lot to play for for Oklahoma. Uh, you know, a slim, you know, 538's got them like a 24% chance to make the college football playoff. I mean, that's better than one in a million. So you're telling me there's a chance. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think Baylor should be good enough. Texas Tech is okay. Obviously, they beat uh, Iowa State just a few weeks ago, but I don't, think, I don't see them putting up 41 points on Baylor. Or a 62-yard field goal, which is yeah. just insane. He just yeah. shirt up an NFL contract. Like, it doesn't even matter what else happens. <laughs> He's like, right? I got that check. Yep. Okay, so I'm gonna let you go first since we have this disgusting crimson behind us. Uh, yeah, yeah. What, uh, and, what's your prediction? Oh man, I think this is gonna be another tight one. Oklahoma's played in a lot of close games all year long, and I don't think this is gonna be any different. But I, I got to go with my guys, man. I, I feel like this is gonna be one where you know Gabe Burkich, who's had a rough couple of weeks, I feel like he's gonna bounce back and and hit his field goals when he gets the opportunities because they're gonna need them this week. They're Every possession is going to matter. And every time you get into scoring position is going to matter. And Oklahoma's got to have to get Gabe Burkich to get his field goal kicks. I, I see this one going something like 24 to 20 in favor of Oklahoma. I think it's going to be a tight game throughout. Okay. I also think it's going to be a tight game. And I just like to, I'm going to just interject real quick to say that a lot of the commentary that I've seen online has been what happened in the past. And I get it. I know that I'm a fan for a team that's like next year is our year. I understand that, but you yeah. don't get to base what's happening this year on past success. If you were in a fantasy football circle, people would be mocking you for chasing last year's production. I just want you to know that. Not you specifically, John, but no, I mean, it's the true. people like, I interacted with. It's true. Like, and I think like in another year where you're off, you know, Oklahoma's offense is humming, you know, like, say it's a, a Kyler Murray year and you're putting 40 points of a, uh, a game on, on everybody heading into Bedlam, then you might be able to feel confident. But with what this offense has done the last couple of weeks, I don't know how any Oklahoma Sooners fan can just assume that they're going to roll into Stillwater and, and win. We, okay. So you said there's been a lot of close games for the Sooners in, uh, in comparison, there's been a lot of not very close games, especially recently for the Oklahoma State Cowboys. I think they get it done, but I also think it's going to be a really close game. I have it 24 to 17 for the Cowboys. I just think being at home and knowing that the Sooners are leaving to go to the SEC, they took Texas, not us. I think there's a lot. On top of that, Malcolm Rodriguez just got snubbed on the Butkus award list. I think he's going to come out and play an insane football game. I would not want to be lined up against him. So I just think as a whole, we're going to come more mad and prepared and ready to win. Yeah. Hey, Malcolm Rodriguez, don't come at me. I voted for you for, <laughs> on my Football Writers Association of America uh, All-American list. I put you down on the Butt Kiss Award list. So uh, John Williams here, you can leave You can leave me out of your hate mail. Um, and hey, I even voted for Mike Gundy for Coach of the Year. I'm, I know that that might be uh, sacrilegious here on Locked On Sooners to say, but the dude has done a great job this year when the expectations were pretty low coming in, I feel like, or at least they were average. You know what I mean? Like, they, I think, I feel like they were typical yeah, for Oklahoma State. You this know, like, is not like I would have never guessed that this was where we would be. And on top of that, he's really kind of relinquished his air raid offense and like the way that he won games. He's winning games in a very different way than he's ever done it before. And I think that takes that takes like a look in the mirror, being like, okay, like it's it's not prideful to to just like let this just let it go. Let's just win games with our defense. I think Jim Knowles has a huge shot at the uh, Broyles Award. I would be shocked if it went to anybody else, but I'd also like to give him all the money in the world. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And hey, and they've got all the money in the world over at Stillwater. I mean, that's that's not an <laughs> issue, right? I mean, which college, which big time college football program, you know, in the Power Five doesn't have all the money in the world? I get so tired of like the best job talk when people start talking about which school has more money. I'm like, they've all got money. That's how they're able to build these facilities and hire these coaches and pay these assistants. Like they've all got a ton of money. They ask their donors they, if they, for more money and the donors like, sure, here, have more money anyway, but yeah, no, it's going to be a fun, totally it's going to be a fun game. Like I, I'm excited that it's a nighttime game, even though I'm very nervous about this game. Um, I'm excited. It's a nighttime game. So I feel like it, it gives it it's just desserts uh, in the national landscape. Um, and potentially we get to do it twice. Um, that's my hope at least. I, so, I I love you, but it is not my hope. I'd like no, to do not. it once yep. and just bury the hatchet. Yeah, yeah, for if, sure. I mean, <laughs> if uh, you, I think Oklahoma State would definitely not like to see Oklahoma twice. Oklahoma obviously has to see Oklahoma State twice if they want to win the Big 12 championship for the seventh straight time. Sorry, I got to get that in there um, on Locked On Sooners. But no, hey, Linda, it's been a lot of fun, and uh, maybe we'll we should get together after the game and recap it. I think that could be a lot of fun as well. So. Uh, Linda, talk to them about where they could find you and your work. Well, you can find me on uh, Twitter at Lindellians. The show is at locked underscore on underscore pokes on Twitter, but just locked on pokes on all of your podcasting apps. And we go five days a week. I got a little heated last night talking about Malcolm Rodriguez. So that was a pretty fun episode. And, uh, you know, I, I agree. We have to meet up afterwards and potentially preview a second matchup. So I'm all ready. Yeah. Two weeks of Bedlam. That'd be a lot of fun, at least for broadcasting purposes. It they, may not be for fun. content. For yeah, content. Yeah. yeah it may not be fun if you're a Cowboys fan uh, having to, to see the seniors twice. But it, anyway, it, it could be just good for the drama. The drama. It's mm -hmm. good for drama. Anyway. Uh, hey, Linda. It's been great. Thank you so much. Make sure you go and follow me on Twitter at John Nine Williams, and you can follow the show at Locked On Seniors as well. If you're on YouTube, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. Leave a comment down there. Let me know how you feel about the show. Ask a question, and give us your score prediction as well. We got set. We got several more episodes to talk about Bedlam. Would love to hear your feedback and what you think is going to happen in this game. For Linda Godfrey, I'm John Williams. Until we talk after Bedlam, Boomer Sooner. Oh, she go did. Pokes. Yeah, I wasn't go. looking. I was looking at my camera. That's on me. That's okay. <laughs> I was going to give you the opportunity. All right. We'll catch you tomorrow.